Hello love, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an acrylic and mixed media artist and instructor, but what I really do is help people connect to their soul through nature and art. It's very common for artists to spend a lot of time alone. We're creating and thinking. Many of us are introverted, but I often feel like introversion is possibly a code for just being shy. I used to struggle with shyness. I felt very average and took pride in kind of flying under the radar, being a good girl and not getting into trouble. But I also wasn't getting noticed. I used to struggle with making friends. I would edit myself and screen what I said. I once had a teacher tell me that it was okay to talk. <laughs> I did break out of it a bit in my teens and 20s when I discovered partying. I was able to loosen up with some liquid courage and bond with people through common goals like rebelling and living for the weekend, that sort of thing. But it wasn't really a sustainable lifestyle. It was pretty shallow. But through some work on myself and determination, I realized that I had to get comfortable in my core with socializing and networking, even if I didn't really feel like it. And by no means is this something that I've mastered, but I have made progress. So tell me if this sounds familiar. You find yourself putting off networking to instead make more art, even though you have a room full of pieces. You let other people lead professional conversations while you dread having them or having to figure out how to seem interesting. Or maybe you assume that artists who make connections and get good clients are all extroverted and popular. So if these sound familiar, the problem might be shyness. We hear a lot about introverts these days, but I think that people use the term as a guise or a smokescreen for what's actually social anxiety or maybe a gap in confidence. Because introversion is when people need to be alone to recharge but once they've filled up their cup with alone time introverts can actually really enjoy socializing so if this strikes a chord grab something to take notes with because in this video i'm going to talk about ways that you can start to break out of your shell and this is a darn good list i must say i put some extra thought into it because it is close to my heart during this chat i'm working on a mixed media abstract painting and I'm actually challenging myself to break out of my shell a little bit with this piece and try a slightly different approach. I just released a class called Take Flight with Mixed Media Abstract Painting. It's up on Skillshare. I'll link it below. And all of the techniques that you see in this video are included in that class. What I'm doing today is demonstrating that you don't have to follow each step in order the way I present it in the class. I talk about it a little bit in there, but you can always follow your instinct and jump in where it feels good, either with paper or paint or pencil or whatever. It's a way to make your art more unique, kind of like expressing yourself socially. <laughs> okay, so now for today's topic, shyness. Shyness is really rooted in interpreting strangers. It's kind of like the door song. People are strange when you're a stranger. Um, <laughs> there's this sense of otherness and noticing differences. So you've got young and old, smart and stupid, skinny and fat. We tend to assume that we can't relate to people who are different, but in the end, we're all human and status is a construct and something that we can overcome because it's just in our heads. So really, we're just worried about rejection. We don't want to bother people or be a nuisance. So we act reserved or get tongue tied because we're not sure how to impress them. If we lack confidence 
and reject others before they have a chance to reject us, it does turn into a self-imposed cycle. So let's get into some steps that you can take to overcome this. Number one, realize that shyness isn't who you are. You might identify yourself as a shy person, but that's kind of BS. You might struggle with shyness, but you're so much more than a shy person. The more you say you're shy, the more you condition yourself to be shy and the more likely you are to remain shy. So understand the difference between saying, I am shy and saying, sometimes I feel shy. If you flip the script and say that you're becoming more outgoing little by little, you can be an outgoing person. Number two, take stock in the origins of your shyness and forgive yourself for it. Like I was an only child and I didn't have enough practice socializing as a kid, but I don't have to stay that way. If you understand it, you can shift its power. Number three, go out. Make small goals to get out in the world. Set intentions to have good energy. Start with safe, welcoming environments. You can't get out of this by just watching videos about being more outgoing. You have to exercise this muscle. And just like exercise or your art practice, you won't be great at it right away. You have to actually practice. Number four, don't expect anything in return. Just show up, be present, and be of service to other people. Don't intend on taking or getting. Instead, focus on giving. So even if you want to get an art show, maybe think of it in a way that you would like to give your services as an artist to this gallery. Okay, so instead of wanting, you are providing. If you allow your charisma to shine and make people aware of what you do, you won't have to make hard sells or beg for opportunities. People will invite you to get involved or want to know more about your art. Number five, introduce yourself to strangers. If you go to an art opening or some kind of function, really anything you do out in the world, smile and say hello. It's one word. It's a start. They will say hi back. And if that's all you can do, at least you did that one thing. Number six, ask them questions. When you're stuck for what to ask, you can go through the six W's and one H question game, which is who, what, why, when, where, how, and would. I added the would on to the end. It'll make more sense in a moment. I'll go into each one separately, but remember to allow this conversation to flow naturally. Ask topical questions without prying too much. Keep it light. Avoid provocative topics like money and politics until you feel like you're a closer friend. And as you go, hopefully they will reciprocate some questions to you, maybe back and forth, or maybe once they've exhausted their stories but just hear them out and then it will be your turn to tell your side of the story. So you want to be a likable listener, which is better than sucking the air out of the room. Okay, so the first W is who. I want you to start, this is the one thing that's not a question just yet. Um, tell them your name first. By identifying yourself first, you are helping them familiarize themselves and understand that you're friendly and that it's safe to let their guard down and tell you their name. It's subtle, but it works. If you think of the movies when there's a situation that's scary, the characters will yell, who goes there? Or identify yourself. And you want to do the opposite and welcome them with your name first, which will diffuse tension. The second W is what? What brings you out tonight? What do you do for a living? What do you do for fun? That kind of stuff. It's pretty superficial, but um, it gets the ball rolling. I really like what brings you out because they'll start to tell you about their life, um, like a little uh, snapshot of their lives and why they decided to come out. The next W is where. Where are they from? What neighborhood do they live in? Where did they grow up? 
where did they go to school? This will give you clues about their socioeconomic background and where you might have some commonalities or perhaps some differences. So it's okay to say ways that you're different. It's not bad. And if they don't like it, you don't have to remain in the conversation with them. You're not hiding or pretending here. You can be yourself and you might just find out that people are interested in your differences. The next W is when. When did they graduate? How long have they been at their current job? Understanding the timing of someone's life helps you understand their age without asking how old they are. And it helps you relate to their stories by having a context for their generation. Next is why. This is good for digging a little bit deeper. Why did you get into your line of work? Why did you move from another state? Now it's time for a little bit deeper storytelling. People love telling stories about themselves and now you're inviting them to shed a layer of armor and really share, which can show that you're trustworthy and a good listener. Next, how. How did they do something? How did you apply for that? How did you find a good realtor? How did you make that big achievement? Now that they're sharing, you can ask for advice or insight into their success. It's a compliment to them that you see them as an accomplished authority on a topic, even if it's just how they care for their lawn. Um, So now you're really bonding. Next and finally, this one is last for a reason. Before they go, before they leave the conversation, ask if they would like to do something. Would you like to do something? Something to keep the momentum up. Assume that they will say yes. Would you like my card? Would you like to receive my e-newsletter? Would you like to visit my studio? If you really want to befriend them, you can ask, would you like to come over for dinner sometime? Now the relationship is growing. And remember to would instead of should. So instead of saying, you should take my business card, you should come over to dinner, ask them if they would like to, because then they have a little bit more, they feel like they have more control, but um, the suggestion is a little bit more palatable. Okay, next how to level up the conversation. So I have three ways that you can elevate the conversation even more if you feel like you can do these. If you don't feel confident doing these, don't try them. Maybe practice in small ways. But the first one is jokes. Humor is hard for me to teach, but all I can say is to keep it upbeat and laugh at their jokes. You can riff off of their jokes, building up onto the jokes that they've made will make them feel more funny. If you want tips on being funny though, Google it. You know, I'm not a comedy teacher, but it's okay to tease yourself a little bit, but don't tell jokes that are too self-deprecating or hit on a sore spot that's too heavy. Number two, the second way to level up is compliment. Uh, You wanna compliment on accomplishments over looks if you can. Um, people always hear the same compliments about their physical strengths over and over. I hear that I have good hair a lot. Some people it's their smile. Some people it's their eyes. If you go for the obvious, they will have heard it and it won't make as much of an impact than if you were to compliment them on something like, wow, you're a really good storyteller or, um, I really admire your career or you're doing good work with this nonprofit, whatever it is, compliment them on what they built. And if it's in the art community and you know about it, reference it. Like, I really like what you have done with this organization. I know it must have been hard at times and, uh, you know, relate to that. And it lets them know that you have done your homework. Okay. The third way to level up a conversation is an icebreaker, which sounds a little corny, but um, if you're just the first person to start something spontaneous and outside of the box, it can make you look like a leader in the conversation if you do it well. So this can be as easy as like goofing around a little bit, being a little vulnerable, 
using a silly voice, being a louder voice in the room or more high energy, uh, making up a game. It can be really creative. But if you're the first one in the conversation to do this, people will follow suit and think that you're a fun person. Okay, and then lastly, how to level down a conversation. This probably goes without saying, but don't get involved in drama, gossip, or any general a-hole behavior. You want to put your best foot forward. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Remember that you're not going to nail all of these tips right out of the gate, but if you practice, you'll become more confident and open up more doors for yourself and your art. And remember, everyone's just kind of fumbling and bumbling their way around this thing called life, so uh, don't take it too seriously. But I hope this helps your confidence. If you have any questions or would like me to go more in depth on a specific topic that I just covered, please let me know. Thank you for stopping by and stay tuned for a word from today's sponsor, which just so happens to be me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It's easy and oh so fast and it will cost you nothing. And if you enjoy my channel and would like to help it grow, think of a friend who enjoys fine art and share it with them so I can spread the creative love and continue to make these videos. My paintings are in my online shop and you'll find the link below. And if you'd like to make more art, I have classes by the dozens. They're all up on Skillshare with step-by-step -step instructions. So that's it for today. Thanks a million for watching. I'm sending you much love and wish you happy creating. The freedom of art is a beautiful thing. We have the power to create anything we want on the canvas. We can set down our cares and worries and fully take flight. Before I started abstract painting, I thought it would be the easiest genre of art to make because you don't have to make the painting look like anything realistic. But oh goodness, was I wrong, because along with great freedom comes the great unknown. Once we lift off from our comfort zone, it's tricky to know what to do next. In this class, Take Flight with Mixed Media Abstract Painting, you will learn easy painting techniques and unlock the mindset that will level up your confidence. In these step-by-step -step lessons, you'll discover how to loosen up with a colorful underpainting, create an easy composition with movement and intrigue, pop colors to attract the eye of your audience, collage with unique accents that will peek through the composition, grunge it up just a bit so that your artwork doesn't look too precious, Embellish your work to add personality while editing it down so that it's not too busy. Go deeper and stick with the process until the painting is finished. And in the end, I share a quick bonus bling lesson about adding a touch of shimmer to the work, if that's your thing. I'll also demonstrate easy color mixing, contrast, texture, brushwork, and layering techniques so that you can have fun and get in the flow. This class is right for you if you're interested in acrylic painting and mixed media and you're curious about how freeing abstract painting can be. Or maybe you've tried abstracts and they turned out flat and awkward because you weren't sure how to capture the right colors and light. So if you love playing with rich colors, gorgeous papers, and want to incorporate more mark making into your art, now is your chance. I hope to see you in class.